Hey, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. My name is Gavin Kitchens, and in this episode, we'll do an unboxing of the Russian Campaign Deluxe 5th Edition, designed by J.R. Edwards. This is put out by GMT Games. This is a reprint of a, of a uh, classic uh, war game, like I said, this is the 5th edition, um, but it's been updated, you know, as, as, the, as the, the hobby has progressed, this has been updated to include rules changes and you know obviously a design style that's more more modern uh, we will take a look at it it's a it's a pretty big game it's it's two full ma full maps uh, it's designed for two players solitaire suitability is high so you would true solo both sides there's no AI uh, new GMT game meter here they have complexity is five they also have replay value is eight so I guess there's enough difference in the game that will uh, allow you to replay it without uh, getting old. So let's crack it open, see what you get inside. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. All right, let's get started. Now this did, this did uh, release at the same time with a set of mounted maps for the Russian campaign. Unfortunately, I did not get those to show you. These are, the, so you'll be seeing the, uh, the, uh, the paper maps, which are, you know, yeah. but that's cool. It'd be nice if, you know, if, I guess for the fifth edition, if they had just, you know, gone ahead and done the full big box version with the, with the mounted maps right in the box, then that would have been great. But as it is, it's at least very light. This was originally copyrighted in 1976 has been around a while and it's highly regarded so let's take a look here so happy to report that this one has the the wonderfully superior matte finish rule book not the magazine finish that they've been doing lately so this rule book comes in at, let's see 36 pages full color as usual got everything divided into uh, you know to outline Get your table of contents, and then uh, I believe everything would be cross-referenced to the rules section here. And let's see, yeah, there we go, like rule 25.2, it tells you where to go, so that's good. I have never actually played this. This is a, this is a monster. Uh, and at a higher level than I normally play, but I'm interested in learning this one. Prepare to play for the campaign game, sequence of play. Let's see how far the rules go in here. Uh, the rules cover, well, looks like there's 19 pages for the rules, then we get into optional rules, and then the different scenarios and developer notes, so. A lot of graphics, though, set examples of the rules, which is always always very helpful to have them right in there instead of in a separate book, so that's a nice, nice touch. Um, I think it's a little dense here in some places. So here's the scenarios. The Russian campaign can be a long game between players of equivalent experience and ability. If the players wish to play a shorter game or if they want to play one of the seasonal campaigns, the following scenarios are provided. The scenarios also provide convenient starting points to play a campaign game. So the Breaking Storm scenario is listed as a five turn scenario. The followed uh, let's see, that's 27.2. 27.3 is Barbarossa. And it is 10 turns. Fall Blau is 8 turns. Zitadel is 6 turns. I guess it just all depends. Does it tell you how many maps they use? Or can you can you play with fewer maps? Or is it is it just gonna always be a monster? Bad swallow. Look at Breaking Storm, the War in East. Well, it looks like it looks like all maps are all used for for all games. Do, 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 do. Well, we'll see. There are scenario display cards, so possibly it says on there which maps are used. Anyway, sorry. And then you have a rules index on the back. 
And then we got our counters. This tells us there are three sets of counters. These are nice large, large counters. They are five eighths inch counters. Sorry. The font is so big, it made the counter actually seem a little bit bigger. So these are five eighths inch counters. They are not pre-rounded. So you'll want to clip them with a organ laminations deluxe 2.5 millimeter corner rounder, the right tool for the job. So there's that sheet. And this And the markers, Fortress City, victory points, odds calculations. And a few more of the counters, there's move 79 variant. Tells you in the middle what the different ones are for. Combat odds, railheads. And we got our two maps here. They are very thick. Very thick maps, so that's good. But you're still probably going to need to uh, to get some uh, plexiglass, unfortunately. And then, yeah, it looks like they always go together because here's the here's the edge here, and it just ends. This is the Black Sea, Kiev, Kharkov, Tula, Gorky. Gorky Park, Bucharest. So this is map one. So it's interesting. The cities and the you see all the towns and everything are facing me, but then the terrain effects chart and the combat results table are facing the opposite direction. So we'll see. Here. Maybe they've got one of the same on the other side of the other map. And these are uh, eight panel maps. So they're 22 by 34 each. So let's see which way they connect here. They connect on the, yeah, so it's gonna be 44 by 34 to have the whole map. They are big hexes though. You can see those there. They are pretty large hexes for fitting the counters on. So it's not a, it's just a lot of map real estate. So in this one, map one or two, I don't know, in this one, everything is, I mean, I guess one player gets to see the turn track facing them. So yeah, if you definitely can get a hold of the mounted maps, it would definitely be an upgrade you would want to do here. The graphics are very nice on the map. I do like that quite a bit. It's definitely, you can tell it definitely doesn't look like a 1976 game anymore. Uh, and you got your turn track from, uh, you have 25 turns from 1941 to 1945. Boxes for surrendered units, re reinforcements and replacements. So there's your two maps. Then we've got our combat results table. Very nice, very simple. Here's your odds, here's your die roll, here's your resolution and movement allowance chart. Still thick. It's actually the, uh, the thickness of the, you know, the good GMT coated cardstock, but they, they've pulled it off with a nice matte finish. You see, it doesn't really reflect light too much. So that's big upgrade GMT, way to go. Let's do that one on the rest of the projects. Weather chart, depending on the month, which we saw on the die roll, tells you what you got. Weather die roll modifier track. That's single sided because that'll sit on the side of the board. And then we've got for the standard game the Russian order of battle chart. Here's the unit you're going to use. Standard game for the axis. Here's your order of battle. And then for the optional game, the optionals game, here are the order of battle cards. So again, nice, very nice quality and then a unique size too when they're folded instead of being, you know, full sheet, they just took up the amount of space they needed to take, take up. And then now for the various scenarios, here is Fall Blau. Uh, but again, it does not, since the maps have 
uh, tracking charts on them, I believe you're going to always have to use the full 44 by 34 map. And hopefully you've got plexiglass to hold that or the mounted versions. So here's the fall blow, fall blow scenario. The Zitadel scenario. Bagration. Order of battles. That's one. And then one for each player, your movement allowance chart and your combat results table. Same thing that was on the other. And then here's your terrain effects chart that was on the on the map as well. So you've got it on a card stock. And this is interesting. We have a small map overlay. And I don't know if this is an optional thing or if this is an errata thing. There was no notes about errata, so I'm going to assume it's an optional uh, or some change in the game causes this to come into play and force this line here. But it is there and it's going to be fun to try to get it under your plexiglass and keep your plexiglass from moving it. So I guess you might want to use some like blue tack or something to, to hold it in place when you need to. But that's there in the box. Don't miss it. It's right here. And then there's one die. One little red die. So the whole game is settled based on the strengths of the units in a roll of one win. Wed die. I got a six. So I win. I win the game. I win the war. The insert that GMT usually uses this is interesting. It's, it's got this very little narrow channel. And the only thing that went in there was that die. Uh, another thing that's interesting is they didn't give you a bag of bags like they normally do to put the counters in because these aren't going to fit. So unfortunately this beautiful constructed insert is probably going to go away as you get a GMT tray to put in there to hold your counters. But anyway, if you pick up a copy of the Russian Campaign 5th Edition from GMT Games and uh, noted in the rules in the Consum Press as well, you're going to get one six out of die. You get a, terrain, a, a map overlay. You're going to get two copies of the player aid, the combat rules, the movement allowance charts. You're going to get the orders of battles for the optional scenarios. You're going to get the order of battle for the main campaign game. One for each side. You're going to get a weather chart and a, a DRM tracking chart. Combat results table, small ready reference movement allowance chart. You're going to get those two 34 by 22 maps that combine three sheets of counters and markers and a very nice, nicely produced, what did I say? 30, 36 page rule book, the Russian campaign. And that is everything that comes in the box for the Lux fifth edition of the Russian campaign designed by J.R. Edwards and put up by GMT Games. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!